All right, ladies and gentlemen, our third quarterfinal of this year's Gibraltar Dars Trophy brings to Doki players from Sweden and Austria. First of all, our Scandinavian and Baltic qualifier. He's already beaten three players to get to this stage. Dyson Perodi, Jelle Klaasse and Benito van der Pas. The ever smiling Swede, it's Pokerface, Magnus Karin! And Magnus is opponent. He has some pedigree in his European Tour events. He is looking to reach his ninth semi-final on the Euro Tour. He's currently ranked number nine in the world. He's seeded number two in the Gibraltar Dars Trophy. He is the gentle Mansur Surliovic. Is Mr. Kirk Bevins. Well, one semi final set up, and no surprises, but two deciders. Peter Wright and Michael Smith will do battle, having come through 11 leg matches against Darren Johnson and Rob Cross. Now, looking to be the first man into the second semi final, well, it's the number two seed against the number two Swede, Mensor Suljevic of Austria, against Magnus Karis, who has been Sweden's best player for many years but sits behind Daniel Larsson in the rankings but he's having a, a fabulous weekend the best he's had for more than a couple of years here can he provide a threat to the gentleman so Sullivich? we're about to find out and Dan Dawson will be talking us through it yeah well the number one seed the number 12 seed both through a strange quarterfinal lineup with four unseeded players one in each quarter of the draw it could well be four seeded players making up the semi-finals the opening semi will be Wright versus Smith can Karis pull off a shot? Can the jammy dodger James Wilson overturn Darrell Gurney? In our last remaining quarter final. Well, Mensor Sulevich has already seen off Alan Tabern and Christo Reyes, but Magnus Karis, what a set of results. He's not just beaten the top player in Gibraltar, Dyson Perodi. The most consistent player on the European tour of late, apart from Peter Wright Yellow Class. First leg is Mensor to throw first. Game on. But Karis has also seen off Benito van der Pass, and he's not just beaten Parodi, Klaassen and van der Pass, one after another. He has beaten them convincingly. He has only dropped six legs. 100. Quite yeah. an astonishing set of results. Certainly is, from Magnus Karras, who we haven't seen much of of late. He did qualify for the World Championship for the first time in four years, actually. But it was beaten... In straight sets by Adrian Lewis. We don't see much of Magnus anymore. But when he does turn up, he does give players a run for the money. But as you said, it's not just been a run for the money today. He's been dominant. 140. Maybe a different story against Mensur Sulevich, who's already given one of his trademark thumbs up to some fans at the back of the hall here in Gibraltar. 84. He does walk around with a smile on his face, doesn't he, Mentor? Always looks like he's enjoying his job. Not many of his opponents enjoy playing against him. No, there were some who were particularly displeased 80. when they see their name next to Mentor Sulevich is on the schedule. after beating Benito earlier on this afternoon nice in the last 16 was asked about the prospect of facing Mensor and he said yeah I've played him a few times and he always beats me so he'd better watch out 60 you know, just a couple of times to find in the, the research before this game once in 2015 once in 2016 Sulevich did come out on top on both of those occasions. 139. Matthew required now, 121. Harris has left himself very handily placed here, so Sulevich might have to take this out, and he may well do. 
Oh, you know what that leaves. The Mentor. 93. But it's one that he's missed. Wasn't missing it earlier on today. He's sulking in the background as he stomped off there. Carries to take advantage. He'll be going 18 tops. I'm close. 18. And that wasn't far away either, Zero but you can't let Mensa have three darts at uh, double 14. Doppel 14, Mensa angst. There's even a word for it. The feeling of dread you get. Stood behind Mensa waiting for him to hit double 14. Yeah, because he inevitably lane. does. So and there we go. The funky Eagle. chicken celebration from Mensa. What a man. Mensa shall leave it. Starting Maverick does everything his own way, doesn't he? He holds the darts his own way, he throws the darts his own way. 43. On stage, there's nobody quite like Mensor. And as we've already alluded to, that's a relief for a number of top players. I'm thinking mainly of Gary Anderson, who has been quite open and honest about his basically hatred of having to play Mensor silly. There are one or two who seem to thrive against Sulevich. I know that Mark Webster's got a decent record. Yes, he does. That brought his 121. fantastic 2016 to a shuddering end at Alexandra Palace, didn't he, Webster? Well, yeah, I should point out that Mensor, I know he has his idiosyncrasies, and he is sometimes one of the slowest players on the circuit. Not always. He does vary his speed and how quickly he takes on the hockey. But the primary reason that even a lot of the top players don't like playing Mensur Sulevich is because he beats them. Because he plays phenomenal darts. Average 104 in the first round against Alan Tavern. Only wow. averaged 93 against Christo Reyes, but he hit more than half his darts at double, which for this tournament has been absolutely spectacular. Not many players who've been finishing as well as Mentor Sulevich, and it is the finishing that has helped him up to number nine in the world rankings, where he currently sits. This is true, and he could set up, 60. tee up by another chance to take him at double 14. And the thing is with Mentor, because he loves double 14, this is quite a natural route to go for him. Double 17 for Ball now. 62. Okay, well, using the bullseye there, the 25 means he gets down below 61, so he should be guaranteed two darts at the double. Brown from the poker face there. 41. Well, he might end up getting as many darts 59. as he wants at the double. On the leg. Well, he only needs one dart at it in the end. It is 2-0 to the Austrian. A break of throw as well, and Mensor just going about his business and having seen off Dyson Perodi, Jelle Klaassen and Benito van der Pas, two of the top Dutch players in the game, as well as the top Gibraltar 60. player. And who, of course, nearly beat Michael van Gogh in here last year, Dyson Perodi. Do not just discount him because he's a host nation qualifier here at the Gibraltar Darts Trophy. We've seen what Dyson's capable of doing and Magnus just shut him down. Well, I'm sure many of us were guilty of looking at the draw and thinking, oh, Perodi's got a chance to another win on his home stage. Well, at quiet, you only have to look at Magnus's Euro Tour record. He's not special. Never made the final day before. Certainly never made the final session. Admittedly, he was a heavy second favourite to make the semi-finals to go any further, but then again, he was a heavy second favourite to get past any of his games, apart from maybe that first one. I mean, he's not dominating the Scandinavian Vignan. rankings. Kim Viljanen is dominating that. And even then, it's his fellow Swede Daniel Larsson. Marco Cantili's above him in the rankings. Sulevich looking for a match, gets one. That's the first we've seen in this contest. After seeing a bucket load in the previous one. One hundred. Well, 
could this weekend turn out to be the platform upon which Mensor Suljevic launches an assault on the rest of the season because he has had some runs here and there a couple of quarterfinals on the European Tour in the floor events he's made a quarter and a semi as Magnus fills it up for his first maximum well should Suljevic miss Paris has a chance oh well 15 off 53 remain that'll be tops Game shot there it the is Mensor seems to be in one of those moods where whatever he leaves anything sort of a hundred or below he's only may only get one dart at a double but that is all he needs yeah Magnus must have thought he City. Had a bit of a result when Sulevic misfired with the first start, but he tidied it up perfectly. And every leg, he's just... It seems like he's had the throw in every leg. Yeah. He's always a visit behind, isn't he? But then again, the averages, there's the best part of 20 points between them. So 20 points per visit. There you go, 18 points per visit. 68 kind of are a visit behind by the time you're getting down to a double. Madden's carries a man who's rocked up at the World Championship. Five times a PDC World Championship, that is, and five times he's failed to win a match, although he did once come very close against Steve Beaton and then decided to have a bit of a set two with the crowd at Ali Pali. Yeah, mentioned that earlier on this afternoon, and yeah, that was perhaps an illustration why Poker Face is not one of the most appropriate nicknames in world darts for Magnus. 100! Yeah, there was two sets up, wasn't he? Missed darts to whitewash Steve Beaton and ended up losing the match 3-2. Well, they did reach a semi-final in the BDO World Championship. Six out by Bobby George. Yeah, so when it comes to World Championships and, and big games at them, Magnus does not have a great record against ridiculously tanned men. 140. 140, though, gives him a sniff of a chance to get a first leg on the board. You know, he doesn't have a good record against men, so Magnus should require 133. 133 players 141. Now, even if he doesn't take it out, he would really fancy himself to come back. But you know what? Don't take that chance. Well, he's going to have to. 93. Sets it up very nicely. Mensor. Can he? No. No, he can't. 60. Agnesia require 40. The double top. Well, that's well. Poker face. Paris ends. Game shot on the fourth leg. Well, there it is. And the he's off the mark. The well, it's something for the Swede. How many more chances will he get? Did miss a couple of darts at the top earlier man. on. Of course. So, he could have grabbed an extra leg. We could be at a level game at two apiece. But as this tournament goes on, you've seen the standard rise as the tournament has gone on, as you would expect. I mean, tonight, already... We've had four guys on here, 399 averages and 101. Two of those guys losing with 99 averages. We saw in the last game of the afternoon what session, I mean? Simon Whitlock averaged almost 99, and he only got four legs against Dowell Gurney. Such was the performance from the Northern Irishman. We'll see if he can carry that on and make it through to a second Euro Tour final of his career. This isn't good, though. Oh, no. School. It is a nightmare visit for Magnus Karras. Well, we just saw Dimitri van der Berg there cheering on, I think cheering on Mentor Stolivic in the same management stable. There are a few dark players who have stayed on and turned up to the venue tonight and are watching on with interest, having had to pack their arrows away for the night. Christo Reyes is one of them, and he's 
wished Tulevic best of luck in his own way on social media. 140. Well, there uh, is that suggestion that if you beat Christo in a tournament, you stand a very good chance of going on and winning the title. It's happened on more than one occasion of late. Admittedly, most of the time he's been losing to Michael Van Gogh and Peter Wright, so, you know. Well, one of the top two seeds. Yeah. But Mensor is one of the top two seeds. With no Michael Van Gogh in here this weekend. Still had five of the world's top ten here this weekend. Six. Just no Michael Van Gogh and no Adrian Lewis, no Gary Anderson does not mean that there's no merit in going on and claiming this title. Far from it. 71 checkout. Going to use all three darts. 55. Still can't quite take it out, Mensor Solovic. He knows he'll be back looking to extend his lead to 4 1. Go within two legs of the semi final place against either Daryl Gurney or James Wilson. It is looking increasingly likely that in the first three quarter finals, the unseeded players will fail to come through. And it may all be on the shoulders of James Wilson to see if we can see one of the qualifiers keep their hopes alive. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that visit of 11 in this leg has really cost Magnus Carries. Unless Sulevic does miss another dart. Game shot. But he does not. Messier Sulevic. <laughs> See, leg is Magnus to throw first. Game he does on. a wonderful line in histrionics, Mensor Sulevic. You see the head butt, you see the wild gesticulations. That one was a new one. We had a new one last weekend, didn't we, where we just vogued. Just gave us a, a statue impression. Yeah, it was incredible. Just. Fired in three big Whoa. trebles, raced up the off him at the halfway line, just stopped dead completely for about four seconds. Who knows what's going through that big Austrian's head? If he ever packs up darts, he could, you know, enter Austria's got talent as some kind 105. of bizarre performing mime artist or something. Well, it's an option. Used to be a publican, mentor. Baton has been passed to a new generation Six. of Austrian dart player. He flogged the pub to Roby John Rodriguez in his brother. Yeah, it was called the Gentle, wasn't it? Which is why he's got that nickname. But they've renamed it to the Sherwood Forest, is it? I believe that's right. I know there's a Robin Hood theme. What happened? Mensor now is his own online dart shop. Excellent service. Deliver it exactly where it's supposed to go. But it will take a while. Now, Magnus, this would get him to a finish. And it does get him to a finish. A second maximum two. for Magnificent Magnus. Yeah, that's not the official line on the website. <laughs> Dan Dawson pitching to handle his PR. 100. Magnus, you require 161. Well, 161, having got to a finish, can he take it out? Doesn't need to in this visit, but he might well do anyway. Treble 17. Will he go for the ball? Go on, Magnus. Go for the ball. 136. Fair few people in this crowd pulling exactly the same face as Poker Face just there. Denied another massive checkout this Six. weekend. Magnus should require 25. A somewhat smaller one facing Magnus Carris here to make it 4 2. Double eight the target. And the target is hit for a 14 Magnus dart leg. Magnus Karras is not done just yet. A couple of maxes in the match for Magnus. We need a, a couple more at least to apply what some pressure on to Sulevic and especially against the throw. But he has found a bit of a zone, hasn't he, in the last few visits. The 180 was followed by a a miss shot of the bullseye for a 1-6-1. One. 123. Again, poker face. Anything but. Wallace and Gromit. Having said that, if we didn't know the story about why Sully Richards got his nickname, that would be a completely ridiculous yeah. one as well. Well, I mean, I think you might argue that it's still a ridiculous nickname. The gentle versus poker face. You've got one man who is anything but gentle and one man who's got nothing like a poker face. I mean, uh, who cares? Yeah, and we've got 82. Jammy Dodger and Super Chin coming up next, so let's not uh, 
get into that debate because it could be a hell of a long one. Yeah, it could be. And look how the averages have come together, though. Mensur Sulevic was 18 points higher in the average at one point. He was a full visit ahead by Ooh. the end of each leg. But there's only a couple of points in it now. The yeah, overall there's, average. There's only a couple of points in the board there because one of them bounced out. And Harris has a chance to make some progress, apply some pressure, get down to a finish. Oh, and another one of those would have left him the 156, which we saw Magnus Karis take out. Ninety-five. Well, in the end, Sulevich is only down to 141, so Karis has still got a decent advantage here. One hundred. Well, would have liked goal. another treble, but would expect to be back. Took his time taking the darts out there, old poker face, serving it up to Solyevich. Yeah, Seventy-one remains, so he doesn't find the treble thirteen in his after. Ninety-six for a break of throw. Seventy-six remain. He could go double-double. He doesn't. He tried to find the treble 20. He was unable to do 56. so. I think that's a fairly old school ploy these days to stay on the treble. Two darts in hand, two big targets. Will he be made to pay? 18. Magnus Rikwa, 40. This game looked as if it was just mensors to run away with at 4-1 up yeah, but Magnus Carrick is finding a way Magnus to claw his first. way back he is throwing Game on. to level the match at 4-all now and could this incredible run continue for the sweep well, who would have thought this at the start of this weekend we knew there was a strong chance of having a new name on the Gibraltar Darts Trophy. With only James Wade in the field that had won it before. But we didn't suspect that that new name might be someone like Magnus Karras. Well, go back to the last time we held this tournament and Dyson Parodi, the man Magnus beat in the opening round here, he made the quarterfinals and he missed darts to beat Michael Van Gerwen who went on to win it. Had he hit that match dart against Michael Van Gogh who knows what, what would have happened yeah well he would have beaten the top player in his half of the draw and that's what Magnus Karras is trying to do here yeah we could see a similar situation here we could see Magnus Karras an international qualifier 140 get match dart against the top seeded player in his half and blow this tournament I mean look Peter Wright is still the favourite to win it we know that but he's going up against the three-time Euro Tour winner, Michael Smith. 60. It is not a gimme that Peter Wright is going to come through that. It's not a gimme that whoever comes through this goes on to beat either James Wilson or Darrell Gurney. But if Magnus Karras has already taken out the tenth seed and the seventh seed, and he were to take out the number two seed, just the belief that he must have. But there is still a lot of work to do because Mensah is down to a finish, albeit... A big one. It's a great one when it goes in. 134. Two big trebles and Magnus Karras is not going quietly. That is a fantastic last start from Magnus Karras to apply some pressure. Will he stay there? Well, again, he does look good. But is the option, isn't it, for treble 14 there? It looked like there was a lot of room in there, to be fair. 108. Well, there was more room in the treble 14. 124. However, it may not matter, because he's down to 24 in the end, and Karis needs a big treble and a bullseye himself, which he doesn't get. 56. So it turns out to be a fabulous setup shot from the Austrian. Well, is this going to snuff out the Swedes' revival? It may end, well do. Mensor Solovic doesn't look that happy about it. But 
it does put him within a leg of the semi-finals almost looked as if he hit the double but his opponent had won the leg there Stolivic not how it works Mensah not made a semi-final on the European Tour this year Mensah he's had a couple of quarter-finals and a couple of last 16s last time he did make the semi-final was in the final European Tour event of last year in Hildesheim 121. he ended up losing in a deciding leg to the eventual winner Alan Norris of course his one PDC title did come on the European Tour that was in Risa in September admittedly he had some fortune Kim Hybrex missing a whole host of darts for the title in that final but Mensor got the job done and he may well be getting the job done in this leg <laughs> really sure why he switched down in that instance he didn't seem to take his eyes off the treble 20 in last <laughs> second the chimp in his brain just decided to go downstairs Mensa. 140 he's going to get to a finish here Mensa. 105 and that is 136 finish Magnus Karras he is not done just yet but he is very close to being beaten and seeing his challenge at the Gibraltar Darts Trophy brought to an end by the number two seed it has been a heroic 59. run from Magnus Carroll 136 and you feel he had to hit a treble there to really apply some kind of pressure to this 136 it's not going to go but if Magnus Carroll is going to keep his hopes alive he's going to have to do it in some style We've seen a 170 this weekend. Darrell Gurney produced it in the very first leg he played this weekend. A 167 in this situation for Magnus Karras could well be shot of the tournament, but it's not going to happen. And Mensor Sulevic gets match darts to book his place in a semi final on the European Tour for the first time in 2017. The European Championship runner up is looking at double top. A one miss. Two missed, but he Mensor rarely misses three, and Mensor Sulevic is through to the semi-finals and will take on the winner of our next match, which is James Wilson against Daryl Gurney. Magnus Karras has had a fabulous, fabulous weekend here in Gibraltar. He goes home, though Sulevic goes through. I'll have a few words from Sulevic in a moment, and then it's Wilson against Gurney. Stay tuned for that. Well, come on, ladies and gentlemen, his best ever European tour. Put your hands together for Sweden, Magnus Karis. Menzo, das war ein sehr, sehr schwieriges Spiel, Weihnachten. Sehr schwieriges Spiel. Ich kenne Kari seit Jahren. Er ist ein super Spieler. Und heute ist er wirklich weit gekommen. Er hat meinen Freund besiegt, Jelle Klassen. Und ich habe gehofft, dass ich auch gegen ihn gewinne, wenn ich meinen Freund Christo Reus besiegt habe. Und ich bin so happy. Das ist dein erster Halbfinale im Euro. 2017. Um, können Sie auch die Finale erreichen? Ich hoffe es. Ich, äh, ich bin so froh, dass ich da stehe und alles weitere ist super für mich. Ladies and gentlemen, he's in the semi-final. Mensa Sujovic! And I'll